Hello everyone and welcome to BHC Studios, coming to you from Studio C. I don't use this part of the studio very often except for this video because I have to do an unboxing right here of the brand new Fujifilm XF 150-600mm f5.6-f8 to F8 RLM OIS WR Fujinon lens. And so I don't know if I'm going to have this as a separate video or embed it to the other video with the X-H2S and the new 18 to 120 lens. Um, but uh, either way, I'm gonna be unboxing this because I need the space, so let's start the video now. All right, let's just put this to the side here. And um, first of all here, I got my notes, uh, $2,000 USD for this lens here. And uh, sales embargo is gonna be July of 2022. So just as a reference, the XF 100 to 400 millimeter lens is probably what, uh, if you have that lens, you're thinking of maybe upgrading to this one. Uh, just as a reference is right now 1899 USD. So maybe, maybe that'll drop, who knows? And uh, yeah, we'll do a little bit of comparison of the specs, but uh, until we go out and shoot with this, we don't know what this lens is gonna be like. And so, as I mentioned, uh, my regular unboxing video setup with the overhead camera wouldn't work with this, so I thought I would uh, just move over here. And um, Fujifilm just wanted me to mention this is all pre-production. Uh, it looks pretty production ready in terms of the cardboard box, and so let me just rattle off to you what you get in the box, because I don't think that will change. And then we will... Um, so here it says made in Japan, which is uh, something that people do look for. And in the box it says uh, interchangeable lens, so the lens itself, lens pouch, lens hood, tripod collar foot, and shoulder strap. So those are all the things that should be coming here pre-production or not. And so here we have the pouch. And so let's just open this up here. And that's uh, kind of a standard fare that you would want with a lens this big as you're transporting it. You don't want to be scratching it up as you're taking it in and out of your bag. And with this kind of thing, you know, if you have like a basket or some kind of a little trolley or something in the back trunk of your car, you can keep this and not worry that it'll roll around too much. And then, and then here is, is the lens hood. And it's nice that it has this little door here so that you can access if you put like a polarized filter in the front or not. It's 82 millimeters, so it's not overly large. Drop-in filters would be nicer, but this is what you get here. And then here we have the, um, the straps. So it actually looks like a body strap. And Fujifilm does make some pretty nice straps that come with their pro gear. It's rubberized on the inside here, so this should attach to the lens itself. And then here we have this top section that comes off and this is this is where you get your little tripod collar here let's check this out all right so we'll see we'll see how this configures but this actually is an arca swiss type connector so if you have a, tr a tripod with an arca swiss connector or tripod head this just slips in you don't need to add a um and a tripod i mean you can on the bottom here if you want to but if you have an arca swiss type you just slide this in which is fantastic one less thing to have to worry about and finally so the box is the box is empty here finally we get the lens and for its size, it actually feels pretty light. And so here you go. This is this is the lens right here. Check it out. And let's take the lens cap off as well. So this is 82 millimeters right there. And there you go right here. Look at that. And then here is uh, the collar here. And so it looks like it has its own little shoe. Put the collar here onto the shoe here. Slide it in. Loosen it up. Slide this in, push this button in here. Should, there you go, slides right in. They tighten it up here like that. And there you go, look at that. And it actually, it's, it, it's lighter than it actually looks. As you can see here, this is an internal zoom. So the lens is not telescope which is kind of a good thing. So here you go, this is this is the size of the lens right here. And for those of you wondering, you know, what's with the silvery white finish? Um, at least this is back in the old days when you use these larger telephoto lenses, uh, the ED glass and the LD glass, so the extra low dispersion or the low dispersion glass tended to be sensitive to heat. And so you'll sometimes see like sports photographers with the big white lenses, the 600 f4s and the 500 f4s, 400 f2.8s. Often they'll put a blanket on top. Uh, that blanket is to actually keep the lens cool. But also when you use a reflective paint like this, it also helps to keep the lens elements cool to keep it from expanding. Now technology might have changed from the 80s and the 90s, but I think it still is a kind of a good idea to not have this retain too much heat. 
And so let's go over the specs of this lens here. So as I mentioned, $2,000 US and uh, sales of Margo July 2022. When you uh, convert it to 35 millimeter equivalent is 225 to 900 millimeters. So that's kind of crazy. If you're into sports, wildlife, landscape, uh, nature, especially birding, I think having uh, a crop sensor system, so either micro four thirds, but I think kind of in the middle APS-C, it's great to have up to 900 millimeters in a lens that uh, is you know reasonably compact considering you're going to 900. And remember, this can also take the teleconverters. And so uh, the diameter is approximately 99 uh, millimeters by 300 and 14.5 millimeters with an 82 millimeter filter thread, 1605 grams. Now that would not include here, let's just take this off. That won't include the, the lens cap here. This is still longer and bigger than the 100 to 400 when completely zoomed out. And that lens is 1375 grams with a 77 mil filter thread. So obviously this is a bigger lens. And also the fact that it's white, it, it just definitely looks bigger. Now you can see here, right here is where you attach the, the neck strap or shoulder strap so you can carry this from the lens and not the body because in the case of a lens like this, the lens is, is bigger and heavier than the body itself. In fact, I have the X-T4 here and so let me just attach the X-T4 to this so you can get a good idea of what it looks like. Look at that. So this is, this is the X-T4 on uh, this lens right here. And as mentioned, you can stick the 1.4 times teleconverter, which gives you a maximum reach of uh, 840 millimeters or uh, 1280 millimeters, 35 millimeter equivalent. Or you can put the two times teleconverter, you're getting 1200 millimeters, which in equivalence is 1828 millimeters in 35 mil. So that's quite a bit of pull power. But of course, with teleconverters, you are adding a stop or you're adding two stops to the maximum aperture. And so you got to be careful about that. You got to kind of crank up the uh, ISO so that you don't get too much shake. This lens does have five stops of OIS, but as well, the body that you're using, if it has uh, IBIS, uh, the camera will know which uh, which groups to shift. So some things the body can handle stabilization. At other times, the, the lens might be more optimized for whatever uh, thing that, whatever you're doing to try to stabilize. Linear motor design, much like any other larger lenses. And here you can see all the different uh, focus range selection, focus preset, autofocus lock, autofocus on, and you do have the, the custom buttons here that you can program so that however you wanna shoot. With this little thing that you unlock, you can, if this is on a tripod, you can go from portrait to landscape without having to change uh, your tripod. So that's actually one of the awesome things about having something like this. And you know, to be honest, for me, unless I'm doing a lot of walking, actually just holding this lens like this, this is probably like one of the best ways to walk around with the, if the lens like this is like this, or if you have it on a monopod, or you just leave it attached to your tripod, as long as you have a really good tripod and make sure this doesn't slip off, uh, that's probably how I would carry it most of the time, or else just have a sort of a quick release system, like the Peak Design Anchor Lock, so that you can quickly remove the straps if you have to, because if you're going from portrait to landscape often like this, the strap can get in your way. Now this is a WR design that is in the name of the lens and you do have the fluorine coating on the very front element to help uh, keep dust and moisture uh, away from the front element. So beyond that, there's not much more to say about this lens other than actually taking it out and going to shoot. So I'm probably gonna do some birding and with the new X-H2S and the object detect, where you know it can detect birds, cars, motorcycles, uh, cats, uh, animals and things like that, as well as uh, per, uh, face detect, I'm um, being able to switch between, this is not really a portrait lens. I mean, I guess you could do it, but uh, it's a little bit too much compression for a person's face, I feel. Uh, but uh, all the other things, I'm gonna give it a try and then get back to you. And um, maybe I will look for the 100 to 400. I'm not gonna do a back-to-back -back test. I'm sure someone will do it. But again, the reason why someone would want this is if you have the 100 to 400 with the two times teleconverter, yes, that lens is faster, but once you put the teleconverters on, are you either getting equivalent or this is gonna be slightly faster. And if you do have the teleconverters, being able to put it on here and then going with the two times converter, being able to go to 1200 millimeter or 
over 1800 millimeter equivalent in 35 millimeter. That's a lot of pull power. If you're taking photos of the moon or if you're doing birding and you want to be able to pull stuff in without having to crop in your image, I think a lens like this is a really great option. And so that's it. My unboxing and first look of the brand new XF 150 to 600 millimeter F5.6 to F8 R L M O I S W R. And uh, look for more videos like this and also look for my review of the new X-H2S and the new 18 to 120 lens right here. So both of these here, keep an eye on it on my YouTube channel. We'll talk to you soon and happy shooting.